year. In body image stabilization with the 63 millimeter lens, it gives us five and a half stops of in body stabilization. Five and a half stops in a medium format camera. So it's incredible. Another first, right? Medium format cameras typically you can start cross into over 50 megapixel into 100 and more. Image stabilization becomes super critical because now vibration, sharpness, massive, right? And with that being said, I know how, how heavy uh, a piece of the componentry, just the IBIS alone must be. And yet I'm surprised. It's not that it isn't heavy. It is. But at the same time, it feels like it's just receptive. I don't understand exactly what I'm experiencing here. Body with two batteries and cards is about ounce over three pounds. Ounce. So for medium format, it's light. Yeah. But the balance of it, the way the camera feels, the way it fits in the hand was really thought about. I was engineered. So yeah, it feels good in the hand. It's about the sure same does. size as a full-size DSLR. So an old pro DSLR body is really close in size. I thought about bringing my 1D, my 4 megapixel 1D, but I already had enough stuff to carry. Yeah, so it's really kind of cool. So Phase Tech Channel Focus also, we now have tracking. We have a medium format camera that will also track action. Shoot at five frames a second. Five frames per second with auto exposure and auto focus lock? No, or not. Tracking. 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 Yeah. Tracking. In. Wait till you see some of the video content that we have. Um, we actually have action shots. A medium format camera. Shooting mountain bikers, downhill mountain bikers out in uh, Virgin, uh, Utah. Wow. So being able to do things like this with a medium format camera that were never done before. Other things that we did with it that were kind of cool, rock climbing. Same photographer, we did a whole shoot in uh, Indian Creek out in Utah, outside of Moab. There's rock climbers. There's more of these on the wall back yeah. there. Yeah, so yeah. About 12 of them were out with different photographers around the world. The U.S. photographer is a pretty much extreme action sports guy. Wow. And we went out and shot some pretty cool stuff with it. So that's the big things. You'll notice there's some in the interface has changed, right? Where are the dials? Yes. Okay. This came out of people shooting video and the T3. The feedback we got in the T3 a lot was... I'm shooting stills. I, I throw it in the video. video and... My shutter speed is way out here, and I need this shutter speed because I'm shooting 24 frames a second. Right. right. So the dials are a great thing, but they also can be, in a professional world, it can be a hindrance. So this camera, you get rid of the dials on it, so you can actually have it set up. So we now have the guy here that we can control whether we are in stills, multi, or movie. So what's the difference? Well, multi would be for things like bracketing or focus bracketing or exposure bracketing or maybe some other things that we might add in the future that might be other multi things. <laughs> and then movie is movie. And so the cool thing is we can actually now, if you're in 24p, a 48 can come up as a shutter speed right. where it would have never come up before. Right. It it's not a true you know, interval in stills. But in movie it is. So now the camera's smart enough that it can actually change the shutter speed setup so we can customize those. And giving you the 180, the true 180 degree shutter. Giving you the shutter angle yep. settings that you really want for yep. good video and for, for clean video. The other thing is I can give you your dials back. <laughs> They've actually gone, so the display here, we can customize this guy, the e-ink up here. So it's yeah. e-ink, we shut the camera off, it displays it's like the H1. Yeah, so I was going everything. to I was going to say. But yeah. If I, this button back here, if I tap him, I now have my dials back. Oh my God. That is fascinating. That is fascinating. Or if you're working in the studio and you're shooting tethered and you don't want any of this, I can actually toggle it into the histogram. So you have that capability to have those different displays set up there and running if you want them. This is well thought out. It's really well thought out. Being versatile, being able to work with photographers, knowing that the market for this camera is going to be professionals, is going to be all kinds of photographers that are going to use this. We want the camera to be as versatile as possible. But the thing that's interesting to me is that from the ground up, you intended this to be a true hybrid. Yeah. So you've got the IBIS. Yeah, okay, if I'm shooting in the studio product shots or fashion models with uh, high-speed sync or 
we don't need that. But for video, if we're going to go handheld, we do, which yeah. is why you have it. Which is why you have it. So really looking at getting out of the studio, medium format really in yeah. digital has been a slave to the studio. Absolutely. This camera is not a slave to the studio. It can go anywhere. Same. Same articulating screen. As the X-T3. Yeah. And you'll notice on the back while you're looking at it, there's an OLED down along the bottom of the back. Yes. That gives different displays too that's customizable. So giving you back some of those things, like, like dials, having that visibility into the settings of the camera without needing to use them. Really, really interesting. And of course, the tilting EVF adapter still works? Tilting EVF adapter still works, but this is an entirely new EVF. It's a 5.76 million dot panel. So we've upped the ante on the panel inspector. Yes, so it's right. even higher resolution. So you can punch in, and when you punch in on the playback, on image you take, it actually will go in the 24X. Gotcha. Because sharpness wow. is critical, 100 megapixel. 24X you, mag. 24X mag. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I just was shooting, what, three days ago? And I was shooting manual focus yeah. Uh, yeah. with exposure, you know, with uh, focus speaking. Yeah. And Sometimes the peaking, yeah. the peaking, the depth of field. What's the tolerance on the depth of field for the peaking? Exactly. And, and exactly. You know, being able to see and being able to critically tell it. Something like this with 100 megapixel. Yeah, you can really tell the difference between slightly sharp and not so sharp. It's it's unforgiving when you're at this kind of resolution. Okay, now how do you set this so that you've got live? Uh, okay, so preview. view mode on the on the back. Oh, this is actually right now. So they're shooting the strobes in the back. So they've actually set the cameras up for the strobes in the back. So if I go into the menu, mm -hmm. we can go down to the oh my god, the wrench tool, and we go. This to, looks familiar. We go to the screen setup. It's exactly the same. It's a it's a T3 on steroids, and we're actually it's going to be set in the next screen to be the um, exposure preview. Yep. Is off because of strobes. You can't shoot strobes at all. Gotcha. This is the mirrorless camera thing. I just set it to a custom function button, that way I can bounce back and forth quick if I'm going to be in the studio. But otherwise, you know, I just run with it. There we go. Really nice. Really nice. Great glass. You guys have great glass. Okay, so... So we talked about 4K video a little bit using full sensor width. Now, are um, we talking UHD or DCI as well? Both. Yeah. So, so basically, think about this way, same as T3, except only limited to 30p. Okay. So we go up to 24, 2398, 24, 25, 29, 98 right. frame rates. Do you get to 60 with full HD? Full HD... I haven't even looked at full HD yet because no one's asked about full HD. 60 frames per second, man. Well, I mean, you know, you said it's like the XT3, so. What's it so say? You, you check it out. If we go in there, what does it actually do for us? That's the easiest way to do it. Everyone's so interested in the other thing that it's. So full high. HD, okay. Okay. 16.9. Yeah. 60 frames per second. And this is full with readout in both full instances. With, it's actually shooting 11K and down the resume. 11K now resonate. Uh, the processing required for this must be huge. Now there was a quad core processor in the XT3. Yeah, What's it's the same, same, same quad processor? core processor, yeah. With a lot more data to move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. A raw file and compressed out of this, 200 megabits. Bytes. Bytes. Yeah. Yes. Bytes. And yes. Bs. 200 yes. megabits. Yeah, megabyte. Mega capital Bs. Bs. Capital Bs. Yes. yes. Yeah. 400. I'm thinking 400 megabits per second in video speed. Right. Right, so yeah, talk to me a little bit about the uh, video codex. What do you got? Do you have so, an intra frame? It will do intra frame stuff, yes. It, <laughs> it, this, literally, this has all been like changing so much. Yeah, of course. That of it course. is all so exciting and so killer that. Uh, You've got the H265 H265 codex H265 as well. Yep, we have that. Long GOP and all intra. There you go. So yes, so you can shoot 24 you all guys intra. You are so serious about video with this. We are serious about video with this. This camera slates, you know, it's sensor size slates in between Harry and the, the red. Wow. Right? So this is what you're calling the uh, super full frame? Um, 
actually they're starting to refer to it as large format. Because in Cine land, this is large format. So what what are the actual dimensions of the sensor? It's the same size sensor as all the, the GFX cameras, so okay. it's the 33 by 44. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Gotcha. It's, it's that sensor. I mean, anything larger than 35 millimeter in Cine speak is large format. Hey, full frame 35 millimeter is large format. I, I, think, I think we've seen a shift. That back when we had film, you know, we had large format cheap film, we had medium format roll film, and we had small format, and 35 with, millimeter. And right? with each format, the differences were big. We're big. We're big. Yeah. What I think we've had happen in digital is the amount of resolution and the amount of detail that you're getting in a 35 millimeter sensor really is approximating to what the film gave you in medium format. I couldn't agree with and you. And so, so you start talking to a what we call medium format size still camera is really giving us a large format thing. So I think format and that talk is all kind of muddled up right now that people don't understand. They're not getting it there. So we're, we're trying to figure out a new language for this, that how do we refer to this? And in, in Cine, then there's a different language, right? You've got super 35, right. you've got full frame, and then you've got 70 millimeter, format, 70 millimeter, IMAX. Yeah. So there's, there's difference of opinions from still to video. So yeah, we're kind of looking at this going, how do we, what do we call ourselves now? And so we're, there, there's a lot of debate on that, but we're starting with ourselves as this being a large format cine camera and a, you know, it's a large, it's a large digital format. Yeah, it makes sense. And this actually is a conversation that continues from our days in Cologne. We were talking about what is a medium format because it's not just six by six in the classic film uh, vernacular, not just six by uh, uh, forty-five yeah. or four point five, but there are smaller medium format yeah. in film. And does it really matter? A sensor can be cut to any size you want. You know, our our sensor size is this. Another manufacturer is going to be slightly different, and another manufacturer is slightly different. So, and even film days, none of them, if you look at the 645 spec out of all the manufacturers, they were all slightly different. Yes. So, there was no real true written in stone, this is how big the format is. And now with digital, we can make sensor sizes basically any size we want to. And this being 4 to 3 aspect ratio, not being 3 to 2. It's different. How do you communicate that? It's more like four by five or more like... It's like macro four thirds. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's pretty interesting. And in any event, you still have the advantage that we saw uh, last year where, you know, 110 millimeters is about, what, a 90 or an 80 something? Yeah, 85. 85. 85. Yeah. And, and yet you're getting that change in perspective for a given field of yes. view, which is lovely for those of us who actually pay close attention to this. Yeah, you're getting that, that that longer focal length, giving you a tighter angle of view, giving you a little less depth of field. Yep. So yeah, so and that's why I think the interest in Cine is so high on big sensors. They're looking for how do they differentiate? How do they make things look different? And how much more data can they do? So who do you see as the number one customer segment Numbers one and two customer segments for this camera. Um, I think I think there's a lot of professional photographers out there that are perfect for this camera. They just have it. They probably shot medium format if they were shooting film back in the day, mm -hmm. but just haven't been able to justify it, whether it was cost or whether it was how the cameras work or what they do. Now we have a camera that basically performs very, very well at five frames a second, has this great resolution, has great handle ability, we can track things with it. It's performing like a DSLR would perform, but it's now a medium format. I gotta tell you, if if this is really doing a hundred percent hit rate at five frames per second tracking, it's going to be better than a lot of full frame cameras out there now. Some of the best. Yeah. 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 I mean right now we're still beta firmware, so Right, we're we're pre-launch at this point. We're pre-announcement. So announcements next week on the twenty-third. Shipping availability should be end of June. So we still got some time to tweak and, and tune some things. But right now, I'll tell you the tracking works really, really.
think that you would see a medium format camera with a wireless mic and headphones coming out of it. All right, hold that for a second. I played volleyball, soccer. I mean, anything athletic, really, I'm into. The people here make sure to tell us that it's GFX 100 and not 100S, but I think they're wrong. It's GFX 100S as in S sick, because this is a sick, ambitious, sick, good camera. Sure, we had to restart it once or twice because it's pre-production. I'm sure that there will be no problem by the time it gets out of the marketplace. But we put a Rode wireless receiver on a medium format camera and just shot Kayleen handheld with five and a half stops of D-body image stabilization. If that's not sick, what is?